The 1911 revolution marked the collapse of the Chinese monarchy, the end of 2132 years of imperial rule, and 276 years of the Qing dynasty. In Nanjing, revolutionary forces created a provisional coalition government and on the 1st of January 1912 was established the Republic of China with Sun Yat-sen as the president of the republic. Sun Yat-sen resigned in favor of Yuan Shikai, the leader of the Beiyang army, a powerful western-style imperial Chinese army established by the Qing dynasty government in the late 19th century and the dominant military force in China at that time. Yuan Shikai attempted to restore hereditary monarchy in China with himself as the Hongxian Emperor. Faced with widespread opposition, he abdicated after only 83 days. His death, shortly after his abdication, led to the split of the army into various warlord factions competing for power in a period called the Warlord Era. Sun Yat-sen established at Guangzhou a military junta to oppose the warlords and the Beiyang government, and in 1919 founded the Kuomintang Party, also known as the Chinese Nationalist Party. Their future rival, the Chinese Communist Party, was founded in Shanghai in 1921, having only 50 members at that time. In 1923, after being denied recognition by the Western powers, Sun Yat-sen and the Kuomintang Party accepted aid from the Soviet Union. Soviet advisors arrived in China to aid in the reorganization and consolidation of the Kuomintang along the lines of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The Communist Party of China was under Kuomintang instructions to cooperate with the Kuomintang and its members were encouraged to join while maintaining their separate party identities forming the first united front between the two parties. Mao Zedong and early members of the Communist Party also joined the Kuomintang in 1923. Sun Yat-sen sent Chiang Kai-shek, one of his lieutenants, for several months of military and political study in Moscow. Chiang then became the head of the Wampa Military Academy that trained the next generation of military leaders. The Soviets provided the academy with teaching material, organization and equipment, including munitions. The Communist Party members were also present in the academy, and many of them became instructors, including Chu Enlai. With this aid, Sun raised a dedicated army, with which he hoped to defeat the warlords militarily. After Sun Yat-sen died in 1925, the Kuomintang split into left and right wing movements with the real power in the hands of Chiang Kai-shek. The Communist Party had grown from 300 members in 1922 to 1,500 in 1925, but was still very small compared to the Kuomintang with 50,000 members in 1923. By that time, the Kuomintang became the most powerful force in southern China. In July 1926, Chiang Kai-shek launched the Northern Expedition against the warlords and the Beiyang government. The campaign was successful, with Beijing occupied in June 1928 and Manchuria accepting his authority in December. From April 1927, the new capital was established at Nanjing and the Kuomintang government was recognized internationally. In early 1927, the Kuomintang and the Chinese Communist Party rivalry led to a split in the revolutionary ranks. The Communists and the left wing of the Kuomintang decided to move the seat of the government to Wuhan, where communist influence was strong. Chiang Kai-shek decided on the 7th of April 1927 to get rid of the Communists and on the 12th of April, in Shanghai, many Communist members in the Kuomintang were purged through hundreds of arrests and executions. Eventually, the left wing of the Kuomintang also expelled communist members from the Wuhan government. On the 1st of August 1927, the Communist Party launched an uprising in Nanchang against the nationalist government in Wuhan. This conflict led to the creation of the Red Army. 
On the 4th of August, the main forces of the Red Army left Nanchang and headed southwards for an assault on Guangdong province. Nationalist forces quickly reoccupied Nanshang, while the remaining communists in Nanshang went into hiding. At a meeting of the Communist Party on the 7th of August, it was confirmed the objective of the party to seize the political power by force. In mid-August, the left wing of the Kuomintang in Wuhan allied with the right wing in Nanjing against their common enemy, the communists. Attempts were later made by the communists to take the cities of Changsha, Shantou and Guangzhou. September also saw an unsuccessful armed rural insurrection known as the Autumn Harvest Uprising, led by Mao Zedong. The uprising was eventually defeated by Kuomintang forces within two months, and Mao and the others were forced to retreat to the Jingang Mountains on the border between Hunan and Jiangxi provinces. Later, on the border between Jiangxi and Fujian provinces, the communists established a Soviet Republic with a surface of more than 30,000 square kilometers and a population that numbered more than 3 million. Other smaller Soviet republics were also created in mountainous areas. Meanwhile, some warlords from northern China formed an anti chang coalition to openly challenge the legitimacy of the Nanjing government. The Central Plains War took place between March 1929 and November 1930 and ended with the victory of the Chinese government forces. After he eliminated the threat from the warlords, Chiang Kai-shek turned his attention to root out the remaining pockets of communist activity in a series of five encirclement campaigns. In the first few campaigns, between November 1930 and June 1931, the communists were successful in defending their republic. The third encirclement campaign was aborted because of the Japanese invasion of Manchuria. The fourth encirclement campaign took place between July and October 1932 and ended with the victory of the Chinese government forces. However, the bulk of the communist forces escaped and rebuilt their base after the early withdrawal of the government troops. In July 1934, Chiang Kai-shek launched the fifth encirclement campaign, but this time with a new strategy. The Kuomintang troops built fortified blockhouses, each separated by about 8 kilometers, to surround the communist areas and cut off their supplies and food sources. In October 1934, the communists took advantage of gaps in the ring of blockhouses manned by forces of a warlord ally of Chiang Kai-shek and broke out of the encirclement. The massive military retreat of communist forces lasted 370 days and covered more than 9,000 kilometers. The communists, under the command of Mao Zedong and Chu Enlai, passed through some of the most difficult terrain of western China by traveling west and then northwards towards Shaanxi. For several times during the march, the communists were on the brink of annihilation by Chiang Kai-shek's troops and of the almost 100,000 people who began the long march, only about 8,000 made it to Shaanxi. Chiang Kai-shek wanted to continue the war against the communists in Shaanxi, but on the 12th of December 1936, he was kidnapped by two of his generals, Zhang Zhe-liang and Yang Hui-chang, in what would become known as the Xi'an Incident. They demanded the immediate end to civil war against the communists and the adaptation of an active anti-Japanese stance. Chiang Kai-shek was forced to negotiate with his former subordinate, Chu Enlai. Both parties agreed to suspend fighting to form a second united front to focus their energies and fight the Japanese. On the 7th of July 1937 began the war against the Japanese, but the alliance between Kuomintang and the communists lasted only until 1941. The civil war was resumed in 1945, immediately after the Japanese defeat.